What next in the India-US strategic partnership? How will both sides increase the ambition in the trade engagement as well? Joining us today for a special interview is Edward Knight, Executive Vice Chairman of NASDAQ, Chairman of the USIBC Board of Directors. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Knight. Let me begin by asking you, a lot of momentum was built during uh, the visit of Prime Minister Modi to the United States. We signed several pacts. In what areas do you see the most significant amount of growth going forward? Well, there, there are several areas that the two governments have identified and created uh, working groups. Uh, one is the uh, Indus X uh, project to focus on the defense industry and increasing India's capability to produce products for its own defense. Uh, and then there's the critical technology and emerging technology ICIT initiative. Both of those, I think, will produce tangible results. There are meetings that are planned in the coming months. Uh, you know, what's most interesting at the critical and emerging technology initiatives is being led by the two national security advisors of the two governments, which underscores the importance of being leaders in emerging technology uh, to protect your national security and in ensure that your economy has sustainable growth. So uh, we see a lot of uh, cooperation and collaboration going on in that area. Right. Uh, potential areas of economic opportunity going forward uh, and in terms of the startup ecosystem, how do you see both countries engaging? Well, uh, one, India uh, by 2025 should have close to or over 200 uh, unicorn uh, startups in this economy. So the, it, that is just one example of the entrepreneurial culture that you have here and the fact that uh, the opportunity for growth in, uh, in public companies and in private companies and technological innovation is here. Uh, in the United States, of course, NASDAQ, uh, we're proud to be uh, the destination for over 80% of the IPOs uh, that occur in the United States. Uh, we've already had 88 uh, this year. Uh, we're very proud of the uh, ARM IPO and Instacart IPO that occurred in September. But, you know, there is uncertainty in the world right now, uh, particularly on the geopolitical front, and that affects the markets, and uh, both here and in the United States. Uh, but, but generally, uh, given the workforce in India, given the demographics of India, given the legal system, which often gets overlooked, but the importance of having a legal system that is predictable and that people have confidence in. All those things come together with the entrepreneurial spirit here to create a, a hothouse, if you will, for innovation and, uh, and, and leadership, in, particularly in the technology area. Right. Uh, you mentioned the impact of geopolitics, the war. We're looking at two wars right now uh, on the stock markets. India and U.S. and India and other countries have been speaking about the possibility of direct overseas listing. India currently is in the process of framing an eligibility criteria uh, for companies to list uh, directly overseas. Why do you think this will open up huge amounts of capital, and why is it important in the current geopolitical context to move on this fast? Well, it, it's all about what's in the interest of India, okay? What is in your interest right now? In your interest is continuing to invest in infrastructure, in uh, endeavors that create new jobs. Uh, technology is particularly an innovation, a job creator. How do you do that? Where does the capital come from? Often it comes from, and, in, and the government's budget for this year, they focused on private equity and joint venture capital. Now, that capital doesn't even begin. It doesn't start. The initial investment is not made until people are confident they have exits. They, they, they invest. They work to assemble management. Uh, they work to get these companies to hopefully grow and take, whether it's a molecule or a chip or some software that they can scale 
and create a viable company. Then they want to do something with it. They want to sell it or take it public uh, in terms of an exit. And what they're looking for is the best value they can get when going public. Uh, or they won't even make the investment. And that's important to keep in mind. They, they're not going to make the investment unless they know they have a secure exit somewhere down the road. NASDAQ, by allowing companies to list there, you're producing an additional option. That doesn't mean every company should do it. It won't be for every company. But we do provide a portal access in a very reliable, trusted way to the global investor. And that's why the five largest operating companies in the world are listed on NASDAQ, other than Aramco. Uh, and uh, that's why they continued to list there. But it is something that would, we think, enhance uh, the capital creation opportunities. And of course, that capital that is raised on NASDAQ, it doesn't stay in New York City. It comes back to India. Uh, and, uh, and that and helps grow your economy, grow the pie here for everyone. And I think that's why the government is looking at how do we do this, what is the best solution. I'd want to emphasize that however you do it, uh, we uh, want to work with the government to ensure it's consistent with your laws and values and uh, economic policies. We talked to your finance minister today and underscored that. Uh, and uh, and we're, we're hopeful uh, there will be movement in that direction. All right. Uh you visited uh, the gift city. You have had conversations with the Indian finance minister, Nirmala Sita Raman. Uh, give us a sense of your engagement and your message to them. Well, our message is that we want to work with them on their roadmap going forward to increase the capital raising, uh, capital creation uh, engine in, in India. And that means working with Gift City a week from Friday. Uh, when the market opens, we'll be ringing the bell with officials from Gift City, uh, and we're excited about that. They're coming, I think, to New York to help explain to the financial community the opportunities that exist with Gift City. Uh, our delegation uh, from the board of the U.S. India Business Council, uh, we were, uh, as you said, at Gift City and got a briefing on those opportunities. Many companies are looking at those. And so we want to support that effort. It's a priority for your government, for your prime minister. We understand that, and we want to make it work. Uh, anything that we can do in terms of expediting, placing a regulatory framework for this? Well, I think uh, SEBI is a well-respected uh, regulator. I think the important thing that people don't focus on always when they think about listing somewhere else, under our rules, you do not have to agree to U.S. corporate governance rules. You can adopt the governance rules of the country from which you're coming, in this case, India. And so if SEBI has rules that says if you want to list in the United States, you must have a certain corporate structure, your voting shares must be handled in a certain way, uh, that's something we can work with. And it can be crafted uh, to reflect, again, the priorities uh, of your economy, uh, the public policies that you have here in terms of protecting investors. Uh, and so our structure accommodates that. It's flexible. Right. right. My final two questions. Uh, India's inclusion of the J.P. Morgan bond index, what's the impact of that, according to you? Well, back up a bit. So the, that index is a form of data and information. Information is the lifeblood of markets. The better the information, the more comprehensive it is in terms of what you're seeing about the bond market, the more people are likely to invest. And of course, making up the part of that index are the sovereign debt of India. So people are getting reliable information and a well-run index that facilitates more investment in Indian uh, sovereign debt. And my understanding is it has resulted in an additional $25 billion in, in uh, investment because of the broadening, going, getting to the global investor, if you will, which I was talking about uh, earlier. Right. That's, that's a critical portal that you want to open as wide as you can. Okay. And finally, which are the areas which make you most excited about India right now? 
Well, I think generally in terms of the world economy, um, uh, it is uh, the promise of artificial intelligence. Uh, it is uh, a tool that could, could literally help us find a cure for cancer. The, the uses of AI uh, are, are uh, uh, they can change the whole world in a positive way, but there has to be some guardrails. And the Indian government and the U.S. government could work together to establish how we're going to develop AI, the infrastructure that is needed for artificial intelligence to be fully utilized. You need the data centers. Uh, you need cloud computing. You need policies around data because data, of course, feeds AI. How are you going to protect that data but also encourage its aggregation and use to find these results that could come from artificial intelligence applications? So. I think it's an area where we could collaborate. Cybersecurity is another area where uh, more collaboration. Uh, and of course, uh, the development of the supply chain for chips is an area where we're already working together. Right, uh, Edward Knight, thank you so much for speaking to us here on CNBC TV. Thank you for having me.